Hey guys, Kenny Phases here. Welcome back. Today we're going to be creating this awesome infinite looping animation where we have a cube infinitely going down the staircase. It's super simple, so let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. Open up a new Blender file, delete default cube, delete the light. Let's switch to cycles here, GPU, turn off our denoising, give ourselves 128 samples, and I'm going to go over here to our layer properties, turn on denoising data, then I'm going to head over to my compositing tab, click use nodes, Go ahead and give us some space here to add our denoising node. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. We're just going to plug everything in as follows. And now we should be good to go with our scene. Just one more thing is we want to go over to our output properties. Just make sure we're at 1080 by 1080 for our dimensions, 24 frames a second for our frame rate. And we want our last frame to be frame 30 because we're only going to need one, frames 1 through 30 for this whole animation. Let's go back to our layout tab. Let's add a plane in here. I'm going to scale that up to 25. S25 is the shortcut for that. And I'm just going to add a nice metallic shader here. We can go ahead and change this later. I'm going to turn the metallic all the way up. And I'm going to turn the roughness all the way up. And there we go. Go ahead and add in an area light. Okay. And now we're just going to bring this above our scene a little bit. We're going to scale it up to about right there. And then I'm going to uh, pop this panel out here and I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. So just like that, bring it just right below our scene right here. Go ahead and select the camera and let's go ahead and switch that to an orthographic view with a scale of 7. Now I'll just copy these location and rotation values up here for the camera. I positioned it exactly in the perfect spot for our animation. Let's add a cube to our scene. Add mesh cube. And I'm going to go ahead and scale that to 0.5. So S.5. Now let's go ahead and bring it up to 1.5 on the z-axis and we're going to bring it over to 0.5 on the y-axis. With the cube selected, go into our modifiers and we'll add a bevel modifier and we'll just keep all these settings except for the segments we want to make those 10. And then we're just going to right click and shade smooth. So now we have a nice smooth rounded cube. Now we actually want to duplicate our cube to create our staircase elements. So I'm going to do shift D to duplicate, press enter, and then holding control, I'm going to snap this to the right here. So now what we're going to do is create our staircase out of this cube here. For our Z dimension, we want to make this one. So now we have this nice long cube here, and we want to do object apply scale. And as you can see, that bevel just got fixed because of what we just did. We also want to bring this up just a bit. So I'm going to hold control and shift, and just go ahead and make sure these bottoms are aligned here. That's perfect, just like that. Now we want to add an array modifier. I'm going to go ahead and first apply this bevel modifier and then I'm going to add an array modifier on the y-axis of 1 and our count we're going to give that 10. And as you can see we have a nice array here and we're going to go ahead and build a staircase with these elements. To make things easier we're going to turn on snapping. So up here you're going to see this little magnet icon you're going to click that and now when we move things they're going to snap into place very nicely. So I'm going to go to my side view here I'm going to click the little red X and then I'm going to duplicate this using shift D and I'm going to move it down here like such and then I'm going to move it all the way over like that and now we want to do this a few more times so I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up now as you can see we have our staircase we just need to bring our floor and our light down below all of this and that is looking pretty good. I'm also going to turn off snapping and I'm just going to fine tune this light a little bit more. Just bring it down a little bit below. That is looking really good. Let's go ahead and snap to our camera view and see where we're at. This is perfect. Our cube's pretty much in the center and now we can start and get into the animation. So the next step is we want to add an empty to control our main cube here. So I'm going to go add empty plane axis. And now I'm going to jump to my front view here and bring it right under my cube just like that. So we want it to be right on the edge of the cube just like this. And now we want to parent the cube to the empty. With the cube selected, shift click the empty and then click control P and press enter to select object. And now wherever this empty goes our cube will also go. And we're going to use this to rotate our cube like this to make it walk down the stairs. Before we animate our cube walking down the stairs, we're going to animate our stairs themselves. So we're going to parent everything to another empty, and then we'll get into the animation of the cube. Go ahead and add another empty to our scene. I'm going to scale this one up so we can see it a little bit better. 
now that we have our empty here, I'm just gonna keep it exactly where it is and then we're gonna go ahead and parent everything else to this empty. The three things we do not want to parent are the camera, the light, and the plane. So I'm just gonna make those unselectable so we don't accidentally select them when we're trying to parent everything to our, our big empty here. So I'm just gonna click and drag to select everything and then I'm gonna shift click our empty here, control P to parent, and now our empty controls everything in our scene, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to go back to frame zero here and I'm going to insert the location keyframe for our empty. And then we're going to go ahead and jump to frame 30 and I'm going to bring our empty up by two and then over by one. So if you look at these new dimensions up here, the Y is one and the Z is two. And I'm going to insert a location keyframe there. And now if you watch, our staircase is moving upwards. And when we, when we play this back, it's actually going to appear to loop. You can see that if we switch from frame 0 to frame 30, we have a complete loop here. The only thing left is to actually animate our cube to make it walk down the stairs. If we go to frame 0 here, we're going to click on the empty that's controlling our small cube. I'm going to insert location and rotation for that. I'm going to go ahead to frame 15, and then I'm going to, on the x-axis, snap this to 90 degrees, insert a location and rotation keyframe there. So now, as you can see, we have this first kind of rotation in the step. And then we're going to move forward to frame 30 and we're going to go ahead and move this all the way down holding control and I'm going to insert another keyframe here. So now if we play this back, you can see that we have our animation, but we're just missing a couple of things. We want to highlight these first two keyframes here, right click, interpolation mode, and we want to give that Bezier. And then we want to highlight the last two keyframes, right click on those, interpolation mode, bounce. So now if we go ahead and play this back, you'll notice we have that nice bouncing effect. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see that a little bit better. And that looks really good. And now it's time to kind of finish up the scene and go ahead and render. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to rendered view so we can actually see what we're doing here. First thing we wanna do is go over to our world properties and let's go ahead and give our world a white color, okay? With our floor selected, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a darker gray black color. And then I'm gonna select our main cube, make a new I'm going to select our main cube and make a new color. I'm just going to give this sort of an orange color. I'm going to turn the metallic all the way up and the roughness down to 0.2. I'm going to go ahead and select one of our staircase objects here, make a new material. I'm going to give this sort of a more blue color, metallic all the way up and the roughness 0.2. Now all we got to do is copy our metallic color to everything else. So go ahead and select everything else holding shift. And then lastly, select the one with the color, control L, and then link materials. And now, as you can see, the whole staircase is blue. So if we snap back into place, it's looking pretty good. This is where you can adjust the lighting. So I'm gonna go ahead and locate my light here, my area light, there it is. And we can go ahead and adjust this to our needs. I'm actually gonna bump up the power to a thousand here. That looks much better. And now we can just adjust this however we like, however we see fit, whatever we think looks good. I think it looks pretty good right there. I think this lighting looks really nice. You can mess with the roughness, of course, on, on all of your objects. And if you go ahead and play this back, it's going to look like a perfectly complete loop. We have our staircase loop with our cube walking down it infinitely. You can use the same technique on many other applications, but I think this is looking really good. You're going to get a seamless loop, and now let's go ahead and render this out. I'm going to go over to my output properties here. I'm just going to select the desktop and I'm going to call this tutorial. And then I'm going to accept that and I'm going to switch our file format to FFmpeg video. I'm going to go into our encoding here. Instead of Matroska, we're going to select MPEG4 and for our video codec, H.264. And now we should be good to go ahead and render. So I'm going to click render, render animation. And now it's going to go through all those frames and then I'll come back to you with the completed animation. So here is our completed animation and it is looking incredible. I love the color scheme. I love the animation itself. Um, there's a lot of creative freedom you guys have with the coloring of course and with the timing of everything, but I think this looks great. So if you guys have any questions or you need any help with anything or there was a step I didn't explain properly, please let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you out. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, and have a great day. I will see you in the next tutorial.